Welcome back here on Live Now from Fox, and I do want to get into some of the other stories that we are covering at this hour. An off-duty pilot riding in the extra seat in the cockpit of a Horizon Air passenger jet tried to shut down the engines in mid-flight and had to be subdued by the crew, a pilot flying the plane told air traffic controllers. Authorities in Oregon did identify the man as the man on your screen, Joseph David Emerson, 44 years old. He was being held Monday on 83 counts, each of attempted murder and reckless endangerment, and one count of endangering an aircraft. That is according to the sheriff's office there. The San Francisco-bound flight on Sunday diverted to Portland, Oregon, where Emerson was taken into custody by officers from the port of Portland that he is set to be arraigned today. A lot to this story and a lot of people are posting about it on social media. So I do want to bring in Keith Jeffries, the vice president of K2 Security Screening Group. He was a federal security director at LAX for nearly seven years and is an aircraft expert. Thank you so much, as always, for taking the time to join us here. Hey, good morning, Josh. Thanks for having me. Of course, so we've talked a lot about different airline related incidents and situations, but kind of tell me what went through your mind when you heard about these allegations and what is alleged to have happened on board that flight. Yeah, the first thing that crossed my mind, Josh, was I'm thinking, is this some form of an imposter that managed to work his way into the cockpit, sit in the jump seat? That was actually the first thing. And then, of course, next thing was what was his real intent? And why was he doing this? And of course, that'll come out through the investigation, I'm sure, through law enforcement. And everybody has those same questions. Yeah, definitely a lot of questions here. Can you break down what a jump seat is and would an off-duty pilot normally be in that seat during a flight? Yeah, the rules are pretty clear. A jump seat is a is an additional seat that's normally inside of the, well, there are several jump seats, right? There's the jump seats that the flight attendants use that are sitting close to the exit lanes. But the jump seat inside of the cockpit is used specifically for those pilots that are trying to get back home or connect to a flight where they're, uh, they may be flying to another destination or getting to their home base. It's also for those airline executives and it, uh, the real purpose of it as well is to keep from having to bump passengers from a seat. But your FAA inspectors will also use those jump seats to conduct inspections as well. Uh, so it's, uh, it's pretty difficult to get inside in there unless you are who you say you are. And of course, this uh, now from what we're hearing, the open source is reporting that uh, it was certainly a pilot and he was authorized to be in there. And I want to delve a little deeper because you have a lot of inside knowledge, I would say, that a lot of us, you know, everyday folk don't have. So uh, I do want to ask you this. We know it was mentioned that the off-duty pilot, quote, attempted to shut down the engines. Where is the jump seat in relation to where he would need to be to actually shut off the engines? Yeah, well, the particular uh, fire suppression system is just is right above the head of the pilot and co-pilot. So the seat, the jump seat is located right behind them. So it's a matter of being able to reach up and turn that uh, particular lever, pull that lever and turn it as well. And uh, yeah, it's, it's not that difficult to do. Uh, the pilot and co-pilot of that aircraft are certainly the ones that deserve the credit of subduing uh, this particular uh, pilot sitting in the jump seat. Can you talk a little bit about the pilot vetting process? A lot of the comments all over the different stories on social media have been asking what sort of vetting process is there to prevent something like this from happening? Can you break that down just based on your experience? Yeah, absolutely. The vetting process, it goes back at a minimum of 10 years. It'll cover everything from one's criminal history to their any drug or alcohol related incidents. It even looks at their credit history, their driving record, their work history. Uh, there's fingerprints that are fed into every criminal database there is to make sure uh, that this person certainly has a clear background and meets that airline's particular standards. But I, I, I guess the thing that uh, I would caution all of the public to know there is no uh, screening process or vetting process to know what's going on uh, in someone's head and what they're thinking. Uh, and so there's just no way to determine uh, what this pilot was thinking and why he was uh, doing or attempting to do what he attempted to do. And the investigation will uncover that, I'm certain of that. 
I know situations like this don't happen very often, but I would imagine that there's some sort of procedure that is supposed to be followed if it does, such as making an emergency landing, which is what this plane did. Yeah, diversions happen quite often, unfortunately, Josh. It could be for a variety of things. Uh, there's uh, The FAA has established what's called the Domestic Events Network, referred to as the DEN. It's almost like an open intercom system for system for all of the uh, air traffic that's in the air domestically. So the first thing that would have happened is we would have heard the communication that went to these uh, centers. There's certainly an operations center in Washington, D.C. that monitors that and listens to it as well. And it's all across the country. The FAA does an outstanding job of monitor, monitoring that den. Once that emergency is called, then and the pilot declares where he or she wants to divert that aircraft and in this case it was portland and he was requesting law enforcement meet him there that is a common thing that is requested and then there's a little bit more information that is gathered what's also good about that is that uh, because of this particular incident there were other federal agencies that could be notified as well and it's a partnership josh so it, you'll have the local law enforcement in portland working on this They'll be talking to the law enforcement in Washington, lots of interviews. The FBI will be engaged. The FAA will be also the lead on this. There'll be a lot of uh, combing through the, the flight deck recorder and the communications over that defense or domestic events network and seeing exactly what happened and talking to friends and family members to try to figure out uh, again what happened and why this pilot did what he did. Yeah, there are going to be a lot of questions, and as you mentioned, there will be an investigation to determine all of this, I'd imagine. Speaking specifically about the passengers on board, I know obviously you were not on board, so it's not clear if passengers would have been aware, but overall in a situation like this, is it possible that passengers didn't know any of this was going on? Uh, of course it's possible, Josh. I think the, probably the first clue of this would have been uh, once the pilot in the jump seat was subdued it from what I'm hearing I think that he was removed from the cockpit for obvious reasons at that point in time I'm sure passengers would have been questioning what's going on uh, and then I'm, I'm also sure that the pilot was communicating with the passengers that there's been an incident on board uh, to and ask everyone to remain calm but they're uh, diverting to Portland how does an investigation into an incident like this work? I imagine it's fairly extensive. It involves multiple agencies. Now, you did touch on this a bit already, but can you break it down just a little bit further? Well, what will happen is, again, there'll be uh, several interviews. They'll interview the crew. They'll interview passengers to see if they saw anything. All of these folks, uh, uh, they'll get a chance to tell them what they saw, what happened. They'll do an extensive background on what led up uh, to this pilot, the, the accused, uh, what what he did that day was in fact uh, he in good standing with his airline. All of that is performance records. Uh, you know, there are just so many things, so many questions. Local law enforcement will help. This is not a um, this is not a quick investigation. They need to be thorough and get to the bottom of this and find out what caused this, why, and then of course uh, the airline itself may want to look at. What are we going to do in the meantime? Uh, do we need to look at our uh, jump seat protocols, uh, how they access, maybe take a look at their ID badging system for that particular airline as well? I'm not implying that there was anything wrong with it. I'm sure everything worked as it was supposed to. It's just uh, certainly concerning that uh, someone would attempt to shut the engines down. Does an incident like this in any way lead to changed protocol will something be looked at a little bit closer we know that in many incidents many investigations for many different agencies they say each incident is kind of a learning experience is that similar for the airline industry no well i think it should just as i touched on it josh i think that anytime you have an incident like this i think we all want to look at what can we do better right how can we change those procedures because at the end of the day it's about safety getting people from point a to point b in a safe manner and making them feel comfortable with flying all right keith jeffries a friend of the show vice president of k2 security screening group a federal security director at lax for nearly seven years. Anything else you want to add about any of this before I let you go? 
No, just reassure everyone. You know, it's the old saying, if you see something, say something. If you see someone acting a little strange, even if they're wearing a pilot uniform, it's okay to uh, let somebody know about it and everyone be safe out there. For sure. See something, say something is very true, and I wish more people followed that. Thank you again for taking the time to join us. Thank you, Josh. Thanks for having me. All right, and I do want to talk a little bit more about this overall because we did have our Fox 2 San Francisco team. They were covering this and speaking with neighbors, getting some more information. I do want to play their report for you here, raw and unfiltered. See, so you're a typical normal guy. Neighbors describe Joseph David Emerson as a family man who loves his wife and two children. He's a very... Uh, Good dad, as far as I could tell, and you know, he's always playing with the kids, always doing things for them, taking them places. He also liked to take flight as a commercial pilot for Alaska Airlines, neighbors say. Every time we go to Seattle, we, we're like, that could be our neighbor driving us, riding us there, piloting us there. But when I, when I heard the news, I'm like, what? It's near Seattle where a Horizon flight took a turn on Sunday, never reaching San Francisco. Emerson was in the jump seat behind the pilots, accused of trying to shut the engines down mid-flight with dozens of passengers on board. Well, it just is very surprising. The plane landed safely in Portland. Emerson's now facing 83 attempted murder charges and others for reckless endangerment. It's scary. You hope that people are vetted. The California Pilots Association says any off-duty pilots using the jump seat are extensively vetted. Outside Emerson's home, a sign reads, free flying lessons, inquire inside, but no one came to the door. He didn't talk about his job much, but he loved what I could tell, being a pilot and, you know, getting new training and just enjoying his job. We're told he taught at Concord's Buchanan Field Airport. He also coached his son's baseball team in Pleasant Hill and was known for having family-friendly backyard parties. Our grandson goes over there when he's visiting us and his kids come over here. Other friends and neighbors say whatever happened off the ground was out of character for a man who appeared grounded. Super shocked because he's not the kind of a person. It has made many here wonder if what happened was malicious or a mid-air misunderstanding. There could be something we don't know yet, something not uh, which can exonerate him, I hope. The FBI has taken over this investigation. Typically, that means searching for clues to find a possible motive. But so far, no federal agents have showed up outside the Emerson's home. In Pleasant Hill, Brooks Jarose, KTVU, Fox 2 News.